What's up, everybody? This is Talking All That Kaz, and I am DJ Casio. I want to thank you for checking out this particular episode of Talking All That Kaz. On this particular episode, I got another great interview that I conducted here on my radio show at 90.9 FM KCC in Salinas, California. But before we get going with that, I want you to go to this address, djcasio.com, and connect with me on social media, whether it's on my Facebook, on my Instagram, on my Twitter, or even if you go and subscribe to my Mixcloud channel, you can hear all my radio shows that I do in their entirety, music, commentary, and interviews. But this right here, talking all that Kaz, this is for just the interviews, okay? I want to thank everybody who checked out the first round of interviews that I put up. Now we're on to the second round. This particular round, I'm going to focus on 2019, but I'm going to sprinkle it in with some more current stuff too. So you never know what you're going to get. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy another edition of Talking All That Kaz with me, DJ Casio. That's right, that's right. Yours truly, Casio, in the building. It's 90.9 FM. KHTC, Radio Blingue here in Salinas, Monterey, and, of course, 104.1 FM out there in Hollister, San Juan Batista, and South Gilroy, streaming live worldwide right now at WednesdayRec.com. And if you've been following my social media, if you listened to the show last week, you know I promised a very special guest joining me this week, and she, in fact, is live with me on the air right now. Madi, original member of Sweet Sensation, coming back to the show. How you doing, Madi? Hey, Cass, how are you, man? I'm very, I'm, whoa, I'm very, I'm very well. I, I, I went a little too high on the level there, but I'm very well. How, how's everything with you? Everything is good, man. Everything is going good. You know, been really busy, um, but everything is good. Everything's on the up and up. No doubt, man. So the last time, uh, I, I always say that, no doubt, man, even when I'm talking to, to females, I apologize for that. It's okay. Force, Don't for, worry about it. force of habit. But uh, last time you were on the show, uh, I want to I want to quickly catch up before we you know dive you know uh, dive deep into the the what's going on now. Uh, last time you were on the show, um, yourself and uh, Sheila were in the process of uh, there was some litigation going on as far as the uh, ownership of the name and whatnot. Bring me up to speed on what happened with that. Well, you know, as you know, you know, we I was able to secure the name, and then a few years after that, we decided to put the group back together. You know, I had uh, I swallowed my pride and decided to reach out to Betty. She never responded. Sheila decided to. She didn't want to work with me. Betty didn't want to work with me. Sheila didn't want to do it without me. So we decided to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. So me, Margie, and Sheila got together and we toured for uh, about two years pretty successful everything was going good and then all of a sudden that went left and ever since that i never even i never even revisited the situation you know i just kind of like fell back and left things alone because it, it was like nonsense it got really ugly um interpersonal drama just for the record i don't want anybody to think or you know other other uh people who want to convey a different message like Betty and, and, and her two minions shut us down. It had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. Like me, my sister, and Sheila are not, we're no longer performing due to our own internal issues. It had nothing to do with, with Betty. Right, right. You know? Um, so, uh, you know, be, seeing as uh, there was uh, issues between the three of you, um, where does that stand now? Is anything resolved or you guys just completely not in contact? Uh, completely not in not in contact. Um, of course, Margie's my sister, so mm. we always have that family issue, which this situation, revisiting the situation in 2015, brought a lot of stuff, uh, you know, resurfaced. A lot of stuff resurfaced. Things that were never resolved from the, our first go-round, mm -hmm. like 30-plus years. But um, I, I didn't take any of that to heart. I, I'm a professional. You know, I, there's show time, and then and then there's times where you know, I, I fall back and I'm in my business. I'm into like supporting, you know. But no matter how busy I am, I, I'll always pull your card if I feel like you, you you know you're putting me in that position. I don't even really like to show myself like that, but sometimes you have to bite so people know that you have teeth. 
so to speak. So uh, I haven't heard from Sheila since then. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of good with it. You know, it's unfortunate that it went down like that. But, you know, I realize that, you know, some people will be willing to sink the whole ship just because they can't be the captain. Hmm. And, and I don't rock out like that. I wasn't trying to be their boss, but I kind of felt like they were trying to be mine. And I wasn't about to be uh, micromanaged. We're all grown. You mm-hmm. know, a lot of people know that my husband and I were in the trenches in 2007 from MySpace uh, to, to Facebook, mm-hmm. all social media platforms trying to set the record straight because, you know, people were out there creating a false narrative about what all took place and who, were, who was responsible for the creation of the group and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. So again, I felt like, you know, people put me in a situation where I have to come out and represent, and I did. So it was kind of like all throughout that time, it was just my husband and I and other people who I didn't even know on social media who came on board because they saw that my husband and I were defending what I was entitled to defend. Mm-hmm. Because again, people were... were, were mischaracterizing the whole situation and so I kind of liken it to like the, when the wagon was, was broke down on the side of the road here you have me and my husband fixing it all by ourselves and then when we get the wagon the wagon up and running now now, now they're trying to be the driver of the rag they want to steer the rag they want to steer, have the reins steer the wagon and kind of kick me and my husband off the wagon and, and I wasn't going to let that happen right Right. Yeah. It, it, it's interesting because, um, you know, to my knowledge, yourself and Sheila never um, coexisted at the same time within the group. Um, so being that you were there first, you know, it, it would it would seem there would be a, a, some bit of mutual respect there. But uh, I guess from the way you're um, explaining it, that wasn't the case. Well, um, that's true. We, we, we never coexisted at, at, you know, in the group at the same time. That's, yeah. I never had a problem with Sheila. I mm-hmm. said it in that last interview. Mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I didn't look at Sheila. Um, like, I, 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 I never had any beef with her. I looked at her as, okay, they, they, once they fired me, you know, she's just going to be the next victim. And, and when Sheila and I got together... And we started uh, talking about all that happened. She, you know, I, I you know, she was kind of like that missing link, or I was the missing link, so to speak, because my situation occurred before her. It was like you kind of, like, kind of like a support situation. Exactly. So, you know, she just came on to further corroborate all that I had been saying from from the beginning, because she didn't have any idea of what really went down. Because when she came into the group. You know, everything changed. Remember, like I, I had said before, the headquarters used to be in my mom's house. Mm-hmm. We, you know, Lower East Side of Manhattan, Smith's Project, shout out to everybody from there. But yeah, the, the headquarters was my mom's house. The limo used to pick us up. We used to do, you know, because we, we were in proximity to everything. The clubs in the city, Jersey, Long Island, Brooklyn, wherever. You know, that, that was the meeting place all the time. And then when Sheila came in in the group and replaced me, they had a, they had to change that because they knew damn well they were going to be rolling up in my house and, and think it was going to be all good. So they had to change all of that. And um, she joined the group and she never asked any questions. You know, she, she didn't feel like it was her place and I could respect that. As far as Margie and Betty not filling her in, I don't know. I, I don't know why they chose not to. I don't even want to speculate that that's something that you would have to ask them. Mm-hmm. So when Sheila and I hooked up uh, recently, you know, the last situation, like I said, she was able to, you know, I was able to fill in those missing pieces. And then to her, I thought that everything started to make sense. But the fact that she replaced me, I, I, I don't know. I never had any hard feelings toward her. I felt like I took her under my wing. I showed her love. Uh, when she had that situation with Sweet Sensation Reloaded, like I said, I took her under my wing. The girls were harassing her, you know, sending her threatening emails and phone calls. And I went on your show, and I and I told them they need to stop it. I'll roll up wherever I have to roll up, the Bronx, Florida, whatever. And they stopped. They they stopped bothering her. Mm-hmm. And and we we started to do our thing, our thing. And, and then I just started noticing, like, I don't know, I, 
people say that I don't work well with others. You know, I, I, I hear, you know, a couple things out there saying, oh, look, you know, her own sister don't want to work with her and, and whatever. It's just, look, I, I'm not about n nonsense, and I don't care who you are. I, I, if I'm not disrespecting you, I don't want to be disrespected. Right. At the same time, I'm not looking at the other members of my group as competition. We're a group. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm like, we, you know, we... It's this friendly competition against, you know, my, our other freestyle colleagues and, peer, you know, peers and stuff like that. But I'm not looking at them like I have any drama with them or they're, you know, I'm competing with them. And mm -hmm. that's kind of like how I felt like, like I was, I was being viewed, like, like we were competing against one another. I kind of felt like they wanted to micromanage me. Uh, I had did a song with my husband's nephew uh, tonight, and, and I, I had been working on that before the idea. My husband, you know, spoke to me about the idea of us possibly reuniting. I put all of that on the back burner, all new music that I was trying to work on and, and then focused on, on what we were doing at the time because I, I like to be fully committed to, to a given task. You know right. what I mean? Right. I kind of felt like they were uncomfortable with that. You know, even when I was, you know, promoting my shows, my husband was promoting my events. You know, I was doing my own thing with Young G and a few other people, and then I was doing my stuff with Sweet Sensation. And, you know, they didn't like that either. It, it was a problem. And, and you know, unfortunately, you know, Gary Torbor, who, who was supposed to be the road manager who I thought could come in the situation and remain objective, unfortunately, it kind of like, you know, it didn't work out that way. I kind of felt like it was them against me. And, and, and then it made me feel like it was, you know, like I was reliving what occurred 30 years ago. Right. I'm like, this is crazy. Right. Uh, you know, I'm grown now. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I don't, I don't have time for it. And it's just an unfortunate situation that we couldn't continue to do our thing because, uh, you know, we're entitled to do so. We, 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 all three of us were very, very much a part of that group. And it's a shame that we, we couldn't continue to make it happen. Um, but, but it is what it is. And, and I made peace with it. And, um, and I, I would, I'm grateful for the opportunity to have done so. You know, I, 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 uh, when I thought about coming back out with them, I, I thought about it. I marinated on it for like three years. You know, I got the trademark in 2012. We, we, the, the whole thing didn't come into fruition until 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I move slow, but because I like to move carefully, I, I never like to do things where I feel like I have to backtrack. I, I don't like it. This right. is why, it's, as long as it takes, if it's meant to happen, it'll happen. And I made it happen. And so I was able to come out and, 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 and prove a couple of things to people. Number one, we were able to do it without Betty. Number two, we were able to do it without Sherry. Number three, we were getting booked all over the country. That wasn't because of Sal. You know, that mm. there were other promoters who were willing to give us a shot. We got paid decent money. We, you know, we, we, we split it three ways equally, the way it should be. Um, and um, I, I got to prove to people that, hey, look, you know, everybody who was mischaracterizing, you know, whatever happened to me, or it's like, oh, what happened to Marty? What happened to Marty? Well, here I am. You know, so I came, I, 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 I shut the shit down. And now I, I, I moved on. Honestly speaking, we're not performing anymore because they don't want to perform. Right. Because I, right. I, I'm never a quitter. Right. But um, I'm only as strong as my weakest link. And even when I still held um, the trademark in my hand, I had people saying, oh, look, they don't want to do it. You know, get two other girls. And I was like, that's insane. Because that, that's going to go against everything I've ever stood for. And, and it's going to make me, just like Betty and K7... And, and Sal's other girls. It's going to make me just like them. And so all my cool points are going to go out the window. And regardless of what these other members ever have to say about me, I have enough respect for them. Whether we vibe and we, we talk or not, you know, I, I'm loyal to a fault. You know, to, to some, loyalty is a word. To me, it's a lifestyle. And so I would never do that to the members of my group. Um, I would never do it to myself. And most importantly, I would never do it to the fans. I'll just, I'd rather just leave them with the memories of, of what it once was, or they can go and, and, and see Betty perform with those two other hyenas. It doesn't really matter to me. Those who know, know. Those who don't, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, hey, we're going to take a quick break, but I just want to make one thing really clear in case somebody's like listening and thinking like, oh, you know, he, he's just taking sides, and I've I've told you this off air as well. I, 
I'm, you know, open to having anybody on the show that wants to, you know, speak their side as you're doing right now. Um, and at full transparency, I've reached out to Betty. I've reached out to Sheila, both of them to come on the show and tell their side of things. And they've both, uh, you know, kind of passed on the opportunity. So, um, right. And my sister too. And I'll be honest with you, Kaz, mm -hmm. you're the only one I've interviewed with. You've Not kept it a hundred and I like that. You right. provide a platform so everybody can say what it is that they have to say. Which exactly. Is a lot more than I can say for a lot of people who want to talk about stories that ain't theirs to tell and then don't want to have anybody up there to, to share their story. How, who's going to tell my story better than me? Exactly. Of course, Betty's going to have her version. My sister's going to have her version. And Sheila's going to have her version. But if you provide a platform where we can speak our piece and then let the fans decide. Right, right. You know? That's so, it exactly. I appreciate you for that. That's it exactly. Okay, so we're gonna take a, a quick pause here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna play a song, and then we're gonna come back. And I can only imagine what uh, is on your mind next. I think you know what's on my <laughs> mind. So uh, we'll be back yeah. in a second, right here. This is ninety point nine FM KHDC in Celine Samonare and one hundred four point one FM in Hollister, San Juan Batista, and South Gilroy, and streaming live worldwide at WednesdayRec.com. That's right, that's right. Back in the place right here, 90.9 FM KHCC Radio Bilingue in Salinas and Monterey, 104.1 FM out there in Hollister, San Juan Batista and South Gilroy, and worldwide at WednesdayRec.com. Streaming live, yours truly, Casio, in the building, still still hanging out, talking to my girl, Madi, original member of Sweet Sensation, founding member, Right. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 that's important, that's important. So, so, sounded, some people. Sounded like you were uh, GPSing some uh, directions right there. <laughs> no. were, were you trying to you trying to find a way out of this interview? <laughs> nah, not at all. Nah. Hey, look, you, you know me. Uh, I've always kept it a bug. I'm, I'm, you know, some people, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, some people like me, some people don't. But, but if you're going to, you know, uh, let's talk facts. You know, facts over feelings. Well, put it this way. I wouldn't put you on the air if I didn't like you. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Thank you, know. you so much. I appreciate that. Hey, so so the the thing that happened, so there, there was like, you know, a little bit of drama going on uh, on uh, on social media a couple of weeks ago. And, um, you know, I was uh, commenting on it and you reached out to me and you were like, hey, I want to I want to come on the show and I want to talk about it. So, uh, you know, there there were some. Um, some rather long videos put up on uh, on Facebook by the quote unquote king mm -hmm. of freestyle, uh, Greasy B, as I like to call him, and um, mm -hmm. really? <laughs> yeah, Gr Greasy B. You know, he, you know what he looks like. He looks like um, you know, you ever seen when you go like you order some fries at like McDonald's and there's that one fry that's like really brown. It's like stayed in the fryer too long. That that that's what he and, and and it's like really like crunchy, that that's what he looks like, but so anyway, so he uh, he was rambling on and on about how all the new freestyle that's coming out is garbage and everybody should be like him and you know this that and the third he is the gold standard of the genre he's uh, he's not even on this planet he's outer space and. And, and, you know, all of a sudden he thinks he's 50 cent and he's like swearing on left and right. And, you know, just isn't this the same guy who walked around in white linen suits and all of a sudden now he's thug life? You know, I, I don't get it, you know, but, you know, what's your take on the whole situation? Um, I a couple people inbox me because this is funny. A lot of people will inbox me with this stuff because. You know, I don't know if it's they're trying to put the battery in my back because they know I'm a live wire and I'll address certain things because I'm free to do so. Right. Tremendous freedom when you don't have allegiance to anyone. Exactly. I've never been involved in a clique. My clique is my husband and my family and and and, and my toys, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I've never really been part of the clique. I, I, I was never that 30 years ago, even, you know, at the height of uh, Street Sensation Success. I've, I've always kind of did my own thing. So a couple of people shared the video with me. And so um, at first, my husband went on, I think, Free Solid Against Phonies, and he said, oh, you know, what Stevie B said, Marty's been saying. And then, you know, we talked about it a little bit, and I'm like, 
you know, in the beginning, oh, okay, but but then he then he went left, and I was like, what? <laughs> like, Stevie, really? Like, I I felt so bad for you know, I just felt so bad about that whole video. I was like, that's crazy. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. These are one of the reasons why I tell you, if I was to open up my friends list on 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 Facebook, you would see that I vibe more with new school artists than I do old school. Mm-hmm. Old school moves funny. And I'm not only talking about my experience 30 years ago. I'm talking about 2015 through the tail end of 2017. The stuff that I witnessed was unbelievable. I, I didn't even want to be around it. Right. I, I would just do my performances, show love to the fans. If they wanted an autograph, I would give them an autograph photo, take a photo with them. And then I was out. I, I, I don't like to be around it because it's crazy. See, these people act like they're, you know, I, and I don't even want to say like artists who are out there selling multi-platinum records because I, I've never really been around artists like that. I don't really know how they behave. But, but to see my old school colleague act that way, it was sad. Because, uh, you know, a, a lot of the stuff that happened 30 years ago, you know, we were kids. You know, I was 16, so you could, or, you know, you could talk it off to, oh, you know, we were kids, we were immature, we were silly. Mm-hmm. But to see these same people act in the same manner was crazy. For well, CBB to come out and say that about the new music that was coming out and the, you know, the new, you know, the new artists who were just trying to do what they love, it, it, I felt, I felt hurt. Well, here, here's here's the thing that struck me funny about it. I mean, first of all, my biggest pet peeve is arrogance. If you if you yeah. if you're dripping with arrogance, I'm done with you from the jump. It, it's over. I cannot stand people that are arrogant. I don't care how successful you are. You just don't act like that. So I posted something the other day. Too much ego will kill your talent. But mm-hmm. look, if anybody knows CDB, they that's CDB, and so. I, I haven't been in the game for a long time. I, I remember CBB 30 years ago. I did a show with him at the Queen Mary. It was so nice to see him. I saw him with his family. I was like, hey, Stevie. He was like, Marty. He showed me love. I introduced him to my husband. He introduced me to his family. It was all good. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. you know, if you're not really around people, you know, you know, you try to give people the benefit of a doubt. You know, you took 30 years. You know, you grow up. Not to mention when he joined, when he got, when he became, when he was involved in the game, he was much older than I was. I was 16. What? He's going to be 16. He got 12 years on me. Right. You understand what I say? So what was he, 26? Like, you know, you're already grown at that time. Right. And and that and that's always been Stevie. And I, what I was taken aback is, look, um, you are, whether anybody wants to agree or not, he is the king. I don't want to go into, because that's another issue. You know, it's like, oh, George Lamont, could I sing him? And, and I, I was it was nice to see George Lamont do his own video where he said Stevie's the king because at the end of the day, who sings better was never an issue. The, people think that freestyle music is like, oh, you got to sing like Mariah Carey. No. I started Sweet Sensation because I remember going to jams in my old hood and I had my sheepskin on with a headband and I, I was dancing to Lisa Lisa's Take, take uh, you know, I wonder if I take you home. When I heard her song, it wasn't like, yo, that girl could blow. What I said was like, wow. Do you hear that? If she could do it, I could do it. And and that's what inspired me. No, Lisa doesn't have the best voice, but we're full force. Together, they made great songs. And she sold. And she was one of the few who were able to cross over the pop. That's how I saw Stevie B. He, but, he, he was bad back then. He didn't have the best vocals, but he, he was doing it. Yep. And to this day, in the genre, he's that dude. But having said that, it doesn't give you the right you know, I, I, I was disappointed that he went there. I think it was hurtful. I, I don't like the fact that old school artists look down on new school artists like they ain't nothing. You know, to, even George Lamont in his video to suggest, he said, you know, you, you, you new school artists, you know, you want to get on these shows, you know, you got to sell those tickets. You got to pack the place. How could you say something like that? Oh, well, How is it possible for them to, 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 to do that now? Right. Okay. Okay. So, 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 see. For, first of all, so, uh, th- this is where you and I have a little bit of a difference of opinion. But then it comes okay. back around, and then we start li- aligning once again. So the whole thing with the, you know, uh, distinguishing. Oh, you can't deny he's the king, and, and this and that. To me, the genre is already so limited 
with the amount or the volume of product that comes out, putting labels on on people is divisive and makes you know other artists feel in, inferior. And so when you go around and exuding that arrogance like he's showing, it's just instead of inspiring a new generation, it's in essence stifling them and making them not want to pursue it because they feel, you know, they just, they're not going to get out of that shadow. Now uh, That I, I understand, but, um, you know, I, 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 I love Lisa Lisa. Mm-hmm. She, she, she doesn't go around saying she's the queen. People no. say that of her. She, people say that about her. Right, but right. she sees herself, I, I don't know. All I know is that I, when I see that girl, she's full of so much love. She's so humble. She doesn't walk around beating her chest talking about she's the queen. Because when you are, you don't have to. But so see, I understand that the titles are unhealthy, but let's not front. They do that in all types of genre. Country, you know, you got Reba. The, the, the fact of the matter is that w- what I think is wrong is when you start attributing these titles to people who who are undeserving of it. To me, I think it's disrespectful. Then again, it's just my opinion. Right. Uh, aside from the king or queen, look, I don't care what anybody says. And old school artists may not agree with me, but what's new? They haven't agreed with me all my life, <laughs> and I'm good. I'm still living. You know, that doesn't change anything. Look, Secret Station was successful because, of course, me, Margie, and Betty, um, our producer, Ted Currier, um, other producers who joined him, uh, Romeo J.D. of the Boogie Boys, right. his, you know, the songs he wrote for us, Charlie D. on the editing, um, radio, uh, record label, record pool party uh, that were introducing this music to the DJs. All of this was a, co- a cohesive collective action that made it possible for us, for mm-hmm. someone to think, hey, look, I'm so-and-so. And I made it just because I'm so and so. I don't rock with that. And it's unfortunate that the new school artists don't don't have that opportunity. So for you to suggest, hey, you know, you want to get on these big shows, you know, you gotta you gotta sell tickets, you gotta pack the place. How are they able to do that when they didn't have what we had? CBB said that they have more access to things or more um, at their disposal than we did back then. Let me tell you something. Traditional radio is what made it happen. If, if we didn't have traditional radio, nobody would have known who we were. Sea Sensation would have never been able to cross over. Sea Sensation would have never been able to tour the country. And that's a fact. The fact that these new school artists are trying to do their thing, trying to use the social media platform, and trying to get their music out with absolutely no help. You have, you know, internet radio shows that show them love. You know, how can you not, how, how can you not admire that? You know right. what I mean, and and that's what I never liked about about that. I, I I don't like it. They a lot of old school artists do it, and 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 I don't like that. Well, you, you know, know yourself. It's not about us. And, and and to to further elaborate on that, so you know, in, in his video, like you said, he's saying you know you you have to sell tickets and you have to do that, but he's talking about these shows, right? That have like eight to ten established artists that people know. So those are the ones that are going to sell the tickets. So then you have you have like a couple spots, maybe like the third in in the lineup and the and the fourth, you know, somewhere in between, you know, mix it in and you bring on somebody new to let them get that experience so they can get the confidence, so they can go out so they can polish their presentation. You have to give them that opportunity. I'm sure when you and and Betty and and Margie started, you guys were opening up for established artists and you weren't getting paid big dollars and you weren't selling tickets, but you were getting the experience. That's we what you have paid to do. Anything. You know, we paid our dues. And this is my argument from the beginning. I've been arguing that cause even before I decided to get Margie and Sheila on board to, to and, and reunite the sensation. My argument has always been that. Like, you know, you have these promoters do it that are doing big shows. Hey, you can't give this person a spot, that person a spot, and, 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 and introduce them to... Because, to, look, let me tell you something. That, that's the argument. It's freestyle dead. Okay, look. No. All right, I, I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this, but the reality is is that 
in a lot of ways it is. You know, you have people who go to these stadiums, these, these events that Alan Beck is doing, Bobby D. Of course they sell out. You're selling nostalgia. That goes to doo that goes to Motown. What do you think, Motown? You know, you have groups like Mary Wilson of the Supreme. She's touring with the Temptations and a whole bunch of other people that were doing Motown music. And, and they, they, they toured cross-country uh, internationally, making great money. But you're selling nostalgia. You know, I, these people go to these events because they, they reminisce. They, 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 they want to leave life, the reality of life. Not, not that it's all bad, but some people want that escape. They, they, they want to go back to the days where they were just young and they didn't have any of these problems. That's what you're selling because these same people who are going to your concert, I don't care who you are, they're also not buying your new stuff that you're putting out. CDB put two albums out. And so, if, if, you know, you, if you, you're that dude, right? And I'll, 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 I give credit where credit is due, but I could also pull your car when, 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 when you get it twisted. I could multitask. You know what I mean? Well, I, I like this about you, but, you know, you played yourself when you said that. Well, let's you know? put, He let, played himself about a lot of things. Let's put it this way. He, he's put out 10 albums since 1995, and not one of them has gone on the charts. So, but, but I mean, but, but, you know, to, to what you're saying, you know, and selling nostalgia. So, I mean, that's kind of the point I'm trying to make is if he, the way he said it in his videos, he loves freestyle and he's all about freestyle and this, that, and the third, right? If that was true, he wouldn't only live in the past. He would try to progress the genre and he's not doing that. He's holding it down. But look. Hey, look, uh, I'm going to call it as I see it. 30 years ago, he didn't even want to be associated with freestyle. Right. He wanted to, he wanted to make, he wanted to make, he wanted to make R&B music. Well, I'm not really too sure about that, but my memories was he didn't even want to be associated with the genre. So he crossed over. Mm -hmm. He was pop. He was that dude. You know, he did a lot of things that a lot of other people weren't able to do. Free Sensation, gratefully, you know. And, and you know, um, we were able, luckily, to cross over. But a lot of the, the, a lot of the artists in freestyle, a lot of the artists in freestyle weren't able to. So you know, back then, he, he didn't even want to associate himself with the genre. And so then now he here you are, thirty five years later, you're on every roster, capitalizing on all of it, right? Mm-hmm. Now, now you know you, you're calling because I I'm not only saying he's the king. You go on his page, he 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 calls himself the king. Right. It's, you know, it's like whatever, you do what you want. My thing is it's like, okay, you sold gold and platinum, rightfully so. He 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 took footage of his house, beautiful house. Fleet of cars, amazing. His house looked great. I'm not gonna take that away from him. He's C D B. You should have that. Like I said, he came in the business, he was grown. He he was more mature than a than a lot of us. So he kept a lot of what he did in house, songwriting, producing. He kept it in house. You keep all that money. He was smart. He came into the business with a with, with, with a business mentality. A lot of us didn't. I, I know I didn't. I just wanted to do what I love to do: sing and dance. You know what I mean? Sing and dance. That's all I was. I, I was. You know, I was wrapped up in. So the fact that you know you were able, he was able to do that, right? He was smart. I'm not mad. I'm not hating. But so, what does that mean, though? That now that you're there, that you know you, you're gonna you're gonna sit in your glass house and throw stones. You know what I mean? That first video was disturbing because it's like if you're that dude, why are you so mad? Right, right. And <laughs> you then got the, all that money. What's your problem, dude? And, like, and and then the the second and third ones were just completely off the wall. But you know, going back to you know uh, about him, you know, he's like going on these videos and like saying how he's you know had all these you know big freestyle hits you know that he only had one song that went to number one or even cracked the top 10 on the billboard top 100 and that wasn't even a freestyle record it was that slow song it was a ballad yeah it was like us like three sensation we had the number one song in the country and it was if wishes came true we also had the number one dance song Mm -hmm. on billboard in 88 with uh, never let you go you know what I mean? But what my point is, is that, look, you know, you, 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 you come and you show your house and all that. And I, I don't know what his reasons for doing that was. I, I'm not going to get inside his head and try to, you know what I mean? I, I don't know what his purpose was. But what I'm saying is that, you know, you know, you were good. 
you know, but you also know the story of a lot of your colleagues that were robbed. We were, we were exploited. <laughs> they, right. they stole money from us. They, you, everybody want to talk about R. Kelly. When are these stories are going to come out? When are, these, when are we going to have a comprehensive conversation about all that went down with sexual misconduct with people who were in their 30s, 35, you know, 30s, mid-30s, early 40s, taking advantage of not only female artists but male artists? There's a lot of people out there now that are legends that had to pay a price to be where they are. Mm-hmm. We don't want to have that conversation, though. You, they want to talk about bullshit. And this is what I'm talking about. Like, Stevie, you're the king. So who much is given, much is required. You have to instruct these people. Show them. Take them under your wing. Humble down. And, and, and he, don't and, challenge and, them. You know what I mean? And yeah. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's, me off, and that's exactly what he's doing. And, and even the further, further it, you know, because as soon as I saw these videos, I was on a mission to go do all my research and get all the facts, right? So this is another thing that always uh, I thought to myself, you know, that's just such an ego stroke. Now, he puts all these shows together, these freestyle explosion tours and whatever, right? So I always thought when you're doing that, basically the most successful artists, like the ones that had the most radio hits, you know, and, and got to the highest spots on the charts, those are the, that's the one that headlines. So I'm looking at all the research and I'm, I'm doing all the, the um, you know, gathering all the information and it comes to find out like I said, Stevie B only had one record that cracked the top 10 on Billboard's Top 100. Expose had seven, yet they are underneath him in the lineup of the shows. Lisa Lisa had more top 10 hits than Stevie B. Why is she performing before him? But look at it. Look at the world we live in. Why do women get paid less than men for the same position, for the same occupation? It's the same thing, Kev. It is. It's the same thing. It is. And the fact of the matter is, I believe when he entered the game, he was a little older than Lisa, too, if I'm not mistaken. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, you foster these relationships, you cultivate these relationships, and then you can manipulate them. And I'm so glad that you brought that up because that was another thing that I found very disturbing. Um, Okay, so you're Stevie B, right? You're the gold standard. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like, you're, 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 beyond the stratosphere, you're on another planet, you know, you're, whatever it was he said. Right? Yeah, he's outer so space. If you're that dude, then then why can't you drop names? Why, why can't you say who it is that you think is putting garbage, you know, putting out trash? Right, so right. Instead of leaving people to speculate. And my thing, and, I, and I'll tell you right now, if you, if you listen carefully, people always tell on themselves, if he was right and exact in what he did in the first video, there wouldn't have been no need for a second and third video. Exactly. Before you know it, exactly. that's one I, of the guys that he, that's on my friends list. His name is Ellick, a nice dude. I think he tours with him. Very humble guy. I think he's into martial arts. You could tell he's very disciplined. The, the next day, he, he's doing a live video and saying, oh, you know, a lot of people call me about Stevie, and they were like, oh, why is he so angry? And, you know, he cursed a lot, and... You know, I, I think with CD men, it's like, okay, we're not going to do this. I, I get this every day when I turn CNN on. You got Trump spewing garbage, and mm-hmm. then 15 people want to come on after him and try to translate what he said when he just spoke in English. <laughs> right. I, I know. I, I heard what he said. Like, so that's, that's – before I get – before we go someplace else with it, I, I need to, 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 to speak on this. Um, so, boom, he, he says – Oh, you know, and, uh, you know, a couple of people say, oh, you're not going to say anything about the phonies or whatever. He's like, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say anything about it because it's not going to get resolved. It's like a divorce. If he would have just kept his mouth shut about that, everything would have been great. Yeah. But, in, but, but instead, but instead he goes, you guys are all whining like little babies. Knock it off. Exactly. You okay. don't even, you know what was so disturbing? The first video, there were people my husband went on Facebook, freestyle against phonies, and he said, Marty's been saying what Stevie B said. There were a couple free, new school freestyle artists that jumped on that status and started saying, oh, who is he? He ain't had a hit in years. He can't sing. This, this, that, and third. Come the second video, they're on his live, and as soon as he starts name dropping, now you see them flip the script. Now it's all oh, respect CBB, he's the king, this and this, and they went back doing cartwheels to their studios, and they were giddy as hell. Well, when he just stunned all of you, like, 
okay, I don't know about you, but I'm grown, and that would have never happened to me. But I was really disappointed that he went there. Again, he's suggesting, you know, quit whining, get your camp, go back into the studio. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do you think? That we're going to be able, like, it's rare that lightning strikes twice in the same place. Like, if you're Stevie B and you dropped how many albums after the fact and you still can't make it happen like you did before, what the hell makes you think any of us are going to be able to do that? Right, exactly. You understand what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. And, and my thing is, is that you, he, he also played himself when he said that he has a rapport with these big-time promoters, the Alan Becks and, and the Bobby D's and all that, and he gets to say who's on the lineup. Right, him. right, so right, have that right. Much power? Right, right, exactly. To 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 say no, uh, you can't have them pro open up for me because I don't like them. How is that helping the new artist? No, first he says he doesn't. You know, I don't want to get personal. But right then and there, you did get personal. Exactly. You said that you're picking people who you like. Exactly. So and then you know he's shouting now. He said, "Yeah, go go ask people. Go ask K. Oh, so you're helping K seven get shows? I I I that was a slap to not only my face." I felt it was a slap to my boy Tony Stone's face, Angel, A.B., to Angel, Sunshine, Caroline, and Margot. Like, let, let me tell you something. It, it burns me to the core when somebody who's a one-man band, you you a solo artist, and you're going to sit there and you're going to make comments about what, you know, what a group should do. You don't know what it's like. You don't, you, don't speak on it. If you don't have anything to say, then don't say shit. But you definitely don't say that. Like, quit your whining. This is what I felt like he was challenging the other. He said, can't nobody mess with me. I'm the Jay-Z. Who could compete with me? Who could do what I did? And I'm laughing because I'm like, is he, is he serious? Like, who, who will be able to do what you do? That train already left. But yeah, if yeah. you catch the Willie Valentine in the prime of the genre, mm -hmm. in the 80s, the 80, 86, if you catch a lot of these youthful artists at that time, then that would be a fair assessment to make. But you can't make that assessment 30 years after the genre is, is, is barely breathing. It's not, a, it's not something that you do. No, and not at all. I haven't seen him in, you know, like I said, I saw him at the, uh, the Queen Mary show that we did. I haven't seen him after. But this is something that I would say to his face. Because at the end of the day, yeah, the, you're the king, but you ain't my king. Don't get it twisted. You know, you, you don't do a damn thing for me. Exactly. And so that's his opinion, and, and this is my opinion, and 30 other people have their opinion. But I don't look at you. I don't look at Stevie as a fan. I, I look at you as a former colleague, and I'm disappointed. And, and my heart goes out to these new school artists who never had the break that we had because there's a lot of them that are talented that could blow some of the old school artists out the box mm -hmm. if you really want to get technical. Yep. But, you know, that's another conversation people don't want to have because <laughs> – you want to talk about the butthurt buff? Forget well, it. you know we we could we could sit here and we could talk all night, but uh, I know it's getting late out there on the east. So, uh, any 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 closing words before I let you go? Um, not not much. It's just everybody, you know, everybody's grown. I I, I made a uh, I I um I made a comment on a status somebody posted against free solid uh, on free solid against phonies, and it, it was to say, look, I I think you know again they want to take my words out of context, you know, uh, I, what I said is if there's an opportunity to bring freestyle to the new generation, you know, I think that it's going to be well received from somebody they can relate to. I don't believe that they want it from a 40 or 50 year old. I could be mistaken. All I know is that, that, you know, we were able to sell it to our generation because they were someone that, you know, they were able to relate to. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? I never said, hey, look, if you're in your 40s and 50s, don't do a song. Hey, do do a song all, all day long. Right. If you if you still have the opportunity to go out there and perform, by all means, do it. Get yours, because uh, a a lot of it was, was was stolen from us, and so now it's a time it's it's time for people to get their their due share. You you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. You know, a lot of people need to stop looking at all the confusion <laughs> that that's in what's little what's you know the little left in the genre. You know, remember, it was Latin hip-hop before it was pre uh, point freestyle. This this is like our thing, kind of like the Italian style, like, La Cosa Nostra. You know, mm -hmm. freestyle is our thing. We need to look at who are the adversaries, who are the ones that are stirring the pot 
of shit and, you know, start forcing them to lick the spoon. <laughs> We're not kids anymore. You understand well, what I'm saying? Well, the, and it's the, a shame that, you know, you got Boricua against Boricua battling over shows, you know, calling people, trying to sabotage people's shows. Or for what? Like this. Well, the, 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 I don't understand that. The, the the biggest one is the one we've been talking about for the last fifteen minutes. So, you know, with, with that, <laughs> you, with, you just got you just got to think for Stevie B, man. You guys, hey, look, he challenged. He said, "Hey, I could fight too. Maybe go to Vegas and show him what you got." Can nah, I, I, Handle it like men. I, I'm I'm a peaceful person, but I will <laughs> speak on stuff. No, I will, like me. You know. I hear you. But hey, so if if people want to uh, to further converse with you, how do they find you online? Oh well, uh, you know, Marianne Ware. That's my legit name. You know, I'm not under an alias. You know, Marianne Ware on Facebook at Lady Spanish Fly on Instagram. I don't really do Instagram too much, and I definitely don't do Snap. And I, I, I never it never made sense to me. Like how many how many apps do you need to speak to the same people? You know what I mean? So I really vibe on Facebook because it's a, it's a good way to, to correspond with people. Exactly. Exactly. You know? All right. Well, you know what? Uh, hold on the line. I'm going to talk to you a little bit off the air, but I want to thank you for taking the time to call in and, you know, set the record straight tonight. Yeah. Yeah. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for having me, Kaz. Congratulations. I know you keep doing your thing. I'm wishing you many more years of success and, and keep your platform open. Please don't be like other people. If Never. You're gonna, if you're going to share a story, let, let the people come on and say what, the, what they have to say because it's important. You know, people don't have no business talking about a story that isn't theirs to tell. I keep saying it. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Hold on the line and we'll be back in a second right here. It's 90.9 FM KHTC.